Uh, thanks so much for this great opportunity um, uh, to talk about some of the recent work uh, in my group. So the topic for today is towards an electrified transportation system, uh, planning, operation, and market design. So a little bit about myself. Uh, so I received my education uh, mainly in civil engineering and transportation system engineering. Uh, in addition to that, I also um, received education in applied economics and applied mathematics. My main research uh, interest uh, is centering around multi-agent systems uh, in terms of modeling and computation. The application domains is focused on smart and resilient transportation and power systems. Uh, I teach both undergraduate and graduate courses as for now. Um, so um, for undergraduate, I teach highway engineering, applied numerical methods, uh, and I developed two new courses for graduate uh, infrastructure systems optimization and transportation networks. So the motivation of today's talk uh, is, as we know, transportation has become the largest uh, greenhouse gas emission em emitters uh, in the United States. And if you look uh, uh, the past 30 years, uh, greenhouse gas emission for transportation uh, have risen 6.6%. Uh, while greenhouse gas emission for electricity generation uh, have fallen over 20%. So a very nature strategy is if we, if we electrify a transportation system, uh, we're able to leverage uh, the decarbonization efforts in electricity sector and to decarbonize transportation system as well. And transportation electrification has a growing momentum uh, over the past 10 years, uh, three major markets, uh, China, US and uh, Germany, and governments in different countries, uh, uh, if you look at this chart, also put very aggressive goals. Um, for example, in the United States, uh, we try to reach 50% uh, of new car sales to be EV uh, by 2030. However, there are still some challenges for large scale uh, transportation electrification. Uh, so here are three uh, most widely discussed, uh, limited charging opportunity, long recharge time, and vehicle ownership cost uh, is still relatively high. So in this talk, I mainly try to address these challenges from planning, operation, and market design perspectives. So before I go into the specific topics, I would like to briefly uh, overview uh, the fundamental methodology uh, we developed. Uh, we call it stochastic multi-agent optimization problems with equilibrium constraints. So the motivation is that uh, we observe uh, infrastructure systems typically involve not only one agent, uh, but multiple agents, um, they, they have their own information availability and try to make decisions to optimize uh, their own objectives. Uh, however, their decisions are not indep uh, independent uh, because they interact over transportation or maybe power uh, network topology, uh, so that we need to impose some equilibrium constraint, uh, constraints uh, to ensure we investigate the most uh, uh, possible interaction outcome. And from computation perspective, uh, we made two contributions. Uh, one is about, uh, you know, um, eliminate the duality gap um, through approximation. And the second one on the right is try to reformulate the problem in different space. Uh, so potentially it could be uh, convert the non-convex problem uh, to a convex uh, optimization, which is much easier to solve. So in this talk, uh, I will, kind of apply this general method, uh, methodology uh, in three areas, uh, the planning of charging station, the operation of electric fleet, and also the market design uh, between transportation and power systems. So start with the charging station planning. Uh, fundamentally, it's an intermediate competitive facility location problems. So the figures on the right uh, shows two key decision makers. Uh, one is investor, the other one is some travelers. So investors need to decide where they want to invest, how much capacity, and what type of uh, charging station. Uh, for users, they may need to start from one origin to destination uh, and may need to detour uh, to receive their services. Okay, so each of them uh, try to optimize their own goal. Investors try to maximize the profits. And for users, it could be general uh, utility, such as travel time, charging cost, and some locational preferences. And to ensure a stable market, we need to impose the supply, the charging supply should be balanced with the charging demand at every location at any given time. 
So with this conceptual framework, we made uh, some uh, publications. Uh, the recent one is led by my student, Singer Barkley. Uh, the main contribution is uh, we try to, we capture the uh, multi-agent interaction uh, over network topology, uh, through which we're able to generalize, uh, uh, generalize the intermediate charging behavior. For example, EV could charge at home, on route, or maybe at a destination such as a restaurant. And we also propose an exact convex ray formulation, which allow us to solve for very large scale uh, of charging station uh, planning problem. So charging station planning uh, should not just focus on passenger vehicles. So there are some other modes and cases uh, we should consider. So the first uh, example is about right sourcing vehicles. So as we know, the Uber driver or Lyft driver, uh, they may not have uh, home charging opportunities. So how can we provide the charging station for them uh, is some of the uh, research activities in my group uh, led by Rocky Bualen. Uh, the second area is, um, is freight, uh, freight sector. So freight is actually a major emitter uh, in transportation system. Uh, however, uh, the charging station planning uh, is, you know, is typically focused on passenger vehicles only. So in recent work, we try to, you know, consider the unique characteristics of freight system, such as driver shift, uh, low energy efficiency, and tight delivery schedules. And the third topic I would like to mention is about evacuation. So if you look at the picture on the right, uh, it's different ranges of vehicles uh, over the past few years. And the black, black line is the, the gasoline vehicles range, uh, if you start from Orlando. So as we can see, for daily travel, uh, electric vehicles uh, can cover the majority of Florida. However, uh, in evacuation, uh, when a lot of traffic needs to go to uh, a, a long distance, uh, how can we provide a charging station to support uh, those extreme cases, right? Still uh, need some uh, attention. Okay, so let's switch gear uh, from planning to operation uh, of electric fleet. So we mentioned electric vehicles have dramatically uh, different uh, characteristics. Uh, however, we argue uh, if we're able to leverage those special characteristics, uh, we potentially able to benefit uh, some systems. So the first example I would like to mention is about electric uh, freight vehicles. So the idea there uh, is that we can leverage the flexibility of charging. So when to charge and where to charge, so to coordinate the truck's location uh, over time so that we can potentially platoon a group of trucks to reduce the aerodynamic resistance. Okay, so in this end, uh, we made a publication uh, led by my student, Rakib Wellen, uh, in TRPRC. And another example is about solar integration. So as we know, uh, distribution system is uh, trying to incorporate uh, more solar energy. However, the fluctuation of solar is typically much, much faster uh, compared to conventional uh, gas turbine energy, gas turbine uh, generator. So how can we utilize electric fleet uh, to you know, absorb uh, excess energy and produce uh, energy to grid uh, to, to you know, support the, 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 the grid services uh, is one of the research activity um, uh, we, we published in 2019. So these two examples kind of assuming we're able to control uh, the entire fleet. Uh, however, uh, in reality, the vehicles are owned uh, by private households. So EVs may not be centrally controlled. So the research question become, can we have a market mechanism uh, to enable a decentralized operation of EVs uh, to achieve the desired system outcome? So to, achieve, to answer this question, we made a series of publications in IEEE uh, transactions and TRPRC, uh, led by my student Fatima Fifa and Sina Barkley. The main contribution uh, is we model and capture the spatial and temporal coupling uh, between transportation and power systems in a unified uh, framework. Uh, this framework allows us to quantify the optimal incentives uh, we need to provide for EV drivers in order to balance their mobility services and power system uh, services. And to solve this problem in large scale, we propose an exact complex formulation, um, which can uh, you know, deal with uh, extreme large case. Um, 
So at last, I would like to briefly mention two of the ongoing, uh, two of the funded projects uh, in my group. The first one is about impact of electrified sharing economy uh, on transportation and energy systems. Uh, this is sponsored by Department of Energy and collaborate with Argonne National Lab. So the main objective is we try to investigate the spatial and temporal charging demand uh, for electrified ride sourcing systems. And we would like to identify what's the charging infrastructure and power system requirements uh, if we have a large scale uh, transportation electrification. The main outcome uh, of this project is the simulation model, uh, agent-based simulation platform, try to capture the interdependent transportation and energy systems uh, interaction, uh, which has been applied in several uh, areas uh, in the United States, including Chicago and DC metropolitan area. In addition, uh, we use data-driven approach uh, to quantify the behaviors uh, of the EV drivers, such as the charging, where to charge, when to charge, and for how long, and also the EV adoption. Uh, the next, the second project I would like to uh, overview is uh, optimizing information value uh, in heterogeneous multi-agent transportation systems, funded by NSF. So. The background of this uh, project is uh, transportation is becoming more and more connected. So we have more and more data and we have more heterogeneous uh, decision makers uh, involved. So the fundamental research question is whether more information uh, is always better uh, for the modern transportation systems. And how can we smartly provide information for different stakeholders, such as when to provide and where to provide the information to optimize the system welfare uh, without sacrificing equity. So this project is still ongoing and currently we uh, develop a traffic network modeling uh, with considering the on route uh, information updates and, um, and also sponsor uh, this project to provide training for students um, and also lead to some publications and conference presentation. So looking to the future, uh, in the short term, I would like to develop a, a co-simulation between transportation and power systems, uh, considering the detail, uh, um, you know, simulation in each domain. Uh, secondly, I would like to look for opportunities uh, to facilitate the transportation electrification in Florida. In the long term, um, I would like to look at the mechanism for transportation and power systems. Um, the motivation is that decision makers uh, within these two systems may not have complete information um, so that how can we use mechanism design to guide the interaction uh, towards the desired outcome. And secondly, uh, I think the fundamental methodology um, could also be applied to other critical infrastructure systems uh, when they are multiple decision makers interact uh, over a network structure. Uh, from education perspective, um, I would like to introduce uh, some customized uh, knowledge about computer programming and operations research uh, for civil engineering students. And collaborations are broadly sought, uh, for example, digital twin, uh, power system simulation, bi-level optimization, uh, et cetera. So um, I would like to acknowledge my team, uh, my students, and also the funding agencies, uh, as well as civil engineering department and various center. Uh, thanks so much.